In this video, we're going to discuss acids, bases, and pH. So there are several definitions of acids, but the one that's most pertinent um, for this exam is definition of an acid saying that an acid is a proton donor. And another term for proton is hydrogen ion. So a hydrogen atom has a single electron and a single proton. The most common isotope of hydrogen has zero neutrons. So because of that, when you remove an electron, you end up with a single proton, commonly referred to as H+, as your hydrogen ion. Acids are commonly recognized when, when you're given their formulas as having the hydrogen in the front of the formula. So here we have hydrochloric acid, here we have nitric acid, here we have sulfuric acid, and one thing that they all have in common is that the first element in the chemical formula is given with a H. So the hydrogen comes first, as we've discussed earlier, cations come first. Even though these compounds are all covalent compounds, they are extremely polar, and so the hydrogen ion will dissociate off of these. So for instance, with hydrochloric acid, the hydrogen chloride covalent bond, because chlorine is very electronegative, uh, and electronegativity is a term that describes greediness of electrons. Now, when the electronegativity difference between a hydrogen or one atom and another atom is very, very large, as it, into, as it is in hydrochloric acid, um, then your greedier atom, in this case chlorine, is going to actually take the majority of the electron density. So if we state here that a hydrogen chlorine bond is kind of like a piece of bread and we are putting jam onto this bread, this side is the chloride side, this side is the hydrogen side. On the chlorine side, we're going to have the majority of the jam that represents those two electrons, and it's going to be very thick here and dense. And on the hydrogen side, it's going to be like when you put jam on top of toast and the covering of the jam is thin enough that you can actually see, you can see the bread through the jam. And so in this case, we say that our electron density or the thickness of our quote unquote electron jam is much higher on the more electronegative side of the bond than it is on the less electronegative side of the bond. And actually, it's so different that you can see the hydrogen ion between this. And when you put hydrochloric acid in water, you actually will get a what we call dissociation. So if you add water to this, it will dissociate into hydronium ion, 
which is water with an extra hydrogen attached to it or an extra hydrogen ion attached to it and chloride ion. And this dissociation event is what causes acidity. The compounds whose acids dissociate completely are considered to be strong acids. For instance, when we look at this hydrochloric acid reacting with water, this is not a reversible reaction. So this is a strong acid. On the other hand, if we look at acetic acid, which is HC2H3O2, and another term for acetic acid would be vinegar, and we put that into water, it will also dissociate, but that reaction is a reversible one. And so we end up with a weak acid. I would not recommend drinking hydrochloric acid, but vinegar we eat on our salad all the time. And the difference between strong and weak is how much of it dissociates. So if we are looking at our hydrochloric acid, this is not a reversible reaction. So every single hydrochloric acid molecule will dissociate 100% to make hydronium ion and chloride ion. On the other hand, if we look at a weak acid, the weak acid like acetic acid or vinegar uh, will produce hydronium ion and acetate ion, but this occurs in a reversible fashion, so not every one of your original acetic acid or vinegar molecules at equilibrium will, be, uh, will lose its hydrogen ion or will be deprotonated. Now you'll notice that if we look at both of these equations of dissociation of our acid, what's formed is this hydronium ion. And it's formed by the donation of the proton or the hydrogen ion from the acid. And this is what characterizes an acid, is this reaction with water to uh, produce hydronium ion. Bases, on the other hand, are generally compounds that have hydroxides, and when they dissociate, they dissociate into a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion then goes on to react with anything that may have protons to donate to produce water and a neutral compound. In fact, if we put an acid and a base together, we end up with water and a salt. Now, in this particular case, we actually got table salt, but salt is another term for an ionic compound, so we could react hydrochloric acid with a different base, say magnesium hydroxide, and that would also produce water and a salt, but in this case, the salt isn't sodium chloride, so it's not table salt. It's a different um, ionic compound called a salt. So generally, we measure the acidity of a solution with a term called pH. 
Now, we're not going to need to do any pH calculations, but the important thing to recall is that as pH goes up, the hydrogen ion concentration goes down. And it goes in a range from pH zero all the way to pH 14. And the more to the left that it has, the more acidic the um, solution is. And as the pH goes up, the more basic, or we could say alkaline, uh, the solution is. And then right in the center at where the pH is seven, that is our neutral pH. Just for some ideas about pH, the pH of blood plasma is about 7.4. The pH of gastric juice in the stomach has a pH of about 1.2 to about 3.0, so that's really acidic. In the intracellular fluids in the muscles, that has a pH around 6.1. And uh, saliva has a pH around 6.3 to 6.9. Uh, so most of the bodily fluids that our cells are dealing with, unless it's some very rigorous environment like in the lining of our stomach, that is between 6 and maybe 7.5. Some common household products that we might look at the pH of would be, for instance, something like lemon juice, that has a pH of about 2.5. Vinegar, household vinegar has a pH around three. Um, tomatoes have pH around four. Uh, distilled water has a pH of seven, so right at neutral. Then if we look at egg white, that would be a pH around eight. Um, ammonia, household ammonia, has a pH around 11. And oven cleaner, oven cleaner is lye, which is essentially sodium hydroxide and that is around 13, has a pH around 13 to 14, depending on how concentrated it is. Now, one more thing that we need to discuss, which is the term amphoteric. And things that are amphoteric can act as either an acid or a base. Now, water is always in a constant equilibrium where it's producing both hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And because of this, water is basically the epitome of an amphoteric compound because it both produces hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And so, therefore, it produces... Uh, a hydrogen donor and a, or a hydrogen ion donor and a hydrogen ion acceptor. 
Here are this video's review questions. Please take some time, pause the video, and answer the questions, and I'll return in 10 seconds to discuss the answers. So a base is a proton acceptor, often containing, but not always, hydroxide. In the second question, if a solution has a pH of 5, is it acidic, neutral, or basic? So a pH less than 7 is acidic. A pH greater than 7 is basic. And a pH equal to 7 is neutral. So in this case, a pH of 5 is less than 7, so it is acidic.